Hey guys, Kate here from Cakeland, and today we're talking about mini gauges. Mini gauges are one of those awesome little things which has enabled us to make a lot of really compact stuff. So recently, you know, we brought out one of these inline regulators which used a little mini gauge. And we've also got things like the blow tie unit which has the integrated gauge. In the top of our wrapped fermentation chamber, also there's mini gauges which you can integrate into the top of that unit. And even in this little mini regulator which fits directly on top of a, a soda stream cylinder. So this is a really handy device. Um, called our Core 360. So definitely we've got a lot of applications where we want to use mini gauges, but in the past all we've had access to is these types of analog gauges. And an as analog gauges get smaller and smaller, it's harder to get the accuracy in the gauge. Now with larger gauges, which are 100 millimeters in diameter, they're often accurate to say, you know, one one percent or something of the gauge range. With these mini 27 millimeter gauges, it's just not possible to get a super accurate reading. So what we've got here is a gauge which is accurate really to about 10 percent of the gauge range. So you know what you are forced to do is really choose a gauge range which is suitable for your particular application. If you happen to over pressurize, so let's say this gauge goes from 0 to 15 psi we've got here. If I over pressurize that to 40 psi and go the needle goes off beyond what the reading will have in the gauge, you can sometimes notice that you'll jump a tooth and that can be kind of annoying because then when you, you know, reduce that down to zero PSI, you're no longer going to be reading at zero PSI anymore, which is really kind of annoying. The other thing is these small gauges, because they've got such small delicate parts inside, they can be um, a little bit easy to damage. So if you drop them and stuff like that, you know, you sometimes be more likely to damage one of these gauges, gauges than one of our uh, new digital ones. Um, and really the other thing is, um, you know, the range is not that great. In one of these digital gauges, you can go all the way from zero to 100 PSI with 1% accuracy. But typically, you know, if you wanted to go between different ranges of pressures on the mini gauges, you'd have to select, you know, one of two or three or four gauges that we stock to suit that particular pressure range. Therefore, you might have to switch, switch, swap them out from one to the next. But to really understand the problem, I'll just take a quick look inside one of the mini gauges here. So this is what I'm talking about. Now, uh, there's actually normally a face behind the needle there, which is which I've just removed in this instance. As you can see, I've got a, a capillary tube. That's this tube here. And as the pressure fills inside of this tube, the tube will essentially expand like this. And as it expands, as you can see, the needle moves like so. So. You know, as the pressure is in there, the, the, this, 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 this capillary wants to essentially straighten out like that into a, you know, into a straight line because that's sort of what happens when they're under pressure. And yeah, it's driving a tiny, tiny little cog and spring uh, and gear in there which is moving this needle. Now, if you did happen to, as I was saying before, if you did happen to drop it or it skips a tooth or something like that, you could always pull the needle off like that, so you might want to use a pair of pliers or something like that, and re-zero it into the position that it's supposed to be in and push it back on. So, you know, you can kind of, you know, repair it, I suppose, easily enough, I guess, and just push that bit back onto the, uh, you know, the, the drive shaft in the zero position. But really, you know, the digital gauges are much, much better. So looking at the two different digital gauges that we stock, we've got this one here, which, which is a duotype one. You can see it says duotype on the front and has a different part number there, the KL18081. This one has a barb or a stem on the back, which suits an eight millimeter push in. So if you've got any, uh, you know, duotype fittings like this, for instance, you know, this type of gauge would just push straight in like that. You could even say push the gauge directly into, for instance, a duotype, duotype fitting, like a, a duotype ball lock disconnect, or, you know, pretty much any eight millimeter or five sixteenths uh, type fitting. Uh, the other gauge that we've got has a radial o-ring seal. Now this particular one is the one that suits things like this uh, regulator here or things like the blow tie for instance or even you know this uh, core 360 regulator here. So what you can do um, is undo a couple screws that holds the stock standard gauge which comes included out of the inline regulator. So you just remove this gauge like so by using a Phillips head screwdriver to remove these two screws. And then what you can do is drop in the digital gauge. Now the digital gauge come factory fit already with the CR2032 battery already installed. And that battery is gonna last you a long time. If you're 
clicking on this and checking the pressure once a day, then you'll be able to get more than two years battery life. Most people aren't checking the pressure of their keg system, you know, every single day. So, you know, that's gonna see, see you out at least, you know, two years, if not three or four years. If you start using the illumination like this and hit the illuminated button there, then the gauge will last a little bit less. We don't know exactly how long it will last, but definitely it will be a bit less, probably, you know, about half that, half that lifetime. Um, so when you uh, <clears throat> are dropping this gauge in, into these little mini regulators, you notice that uh, you've got uh, different orientations, and this is really the same with all the products that we have. We've got basically four little screw holes in each corner, so you could put it in like that if you wanted to, or depending on the particular orientation of this, you've got four different orientations of which you can face the gauge, giving you maximum flexibility. Okay, now eventually you're gonna get to the stage where you're gonna have to change the battery on these little bad boys. So. If I flip these over, you can see the sides are slightly different. Uh, what I'm looking for on this side is this little uh, black plastic spacer here. So that, that'll have to be removed so we can get into the battery tray. Um, so if you've got one of these gauges, the KL18388, uh, this is the one that goes into these regulators. These only have two screws on the back because they utilize the screws which come with the regulator itself to screw in from the front. If you've got the duotite uh, stem gauge, digital gauge, this one has four um, you know, uh, fasteners basically on the back and you have to undo two of them. So I'll show you how to undo this one because um, it's a little bit more complex. Um, yeah, so I've got these two fasteners here. I've got the bolts and also the Phillips head screw. So I'm gonna undo this nut from the back like so. So it was already a little bit loose actually. And then I'm gonna undo this screw from the front here and just take that out like so. Yeah, so you're really not gonna be have to, having to change battery very frequently at all, but this just saves having that question down the track if I just show you guys how to do this now. Undo the other screw like this, and now this uh, plastic piece just comes out like that. Now what I've, what I've got is just a bit of a toothpick, or look, I've just got this like piece of metal here, but uh, I go from the opposing side now and push the battery out of the battery tray like this. So as you can see, it's a CR2032 battery and make sure you buy the exact replacement for that one. So CR32 button cell and drop that into place. Now this one's a perfectly full battery, so I'm gonna you know, put that same one back in there. Um, put the battery tray back into place like this, or the spacer rather. Um, and then do up that nut from one side, and then, oops, and then do up this bolt from the other side here. Now I will note that it's a good idea to just use a hand hand tools for this one. I wouldn't use for these delicate electronics. I wouldn't use like a cordless screwdriver. That'll just give you too much torque, and it possibly might mean you're going to strip the threads or potentially damage the gauge. So yeah, just go hand tight like this, no need to go crazy. The other thing is because these screws are essentially holding the entire uh, gauge together, it's important to do them up to a similar level of tightness. Otherwise uh, you may find, you know, uh, the screen won't illuminate properly or something if you've gone drastically wrong there. Um, yeah, but uh, it's pretty easy. You know, you don't need to use a torque wrench or anything like that to get the exact torque, but just sort of approximately the same uh, tightness for each screw in every corner and then I do that one up just like that. So um, as you can see now the gauge turns on, hit this button here and I can see the illumination uh, you know is working perfectly so yeah, that's how to change the battery over. Well that wraps it up for this video guys, hope you enjoyed it. If you want to uh, subscribe it'd be very much appreciated, bottom right hand corner and of course as always sign up to the Facebook Homebrew community group. Alright see you guys next time, bye.